Good morning. Welcome to the Western Heroes United Methodist Church. We are glad to have you all here this morning. Praise the Lord. Announcements. Here comes one. Uh, Good morning. I've got a couple things this morning. First off, thank you to everyone who contributed to the breakfast. Ellen, Margaret, Janine, and um, had quite a few people cooking tonight. Um, so thank you to everybody that contributed, and thank you to all that came and ate with us. We raised four hundred and twenty-four dollars for the puppet ministry. So. Fun things planned with that going forward in the future. So thank you again for your contribution. Youth tonight will be participating with everyone else Carolyn. So no one forget Carolyn tonight starting at 5 o'clock. So hope to see everybody here. Also youth choir at 6.30 on Wednesday. And we will be going until about 8 because we're going to do a run through with the chance of choir. So everybody be here Wednesday at 6.30. Thank you. I also lift up that five o'clock for Kelly, and we'll have a drink and eat after Also, uh, if you're a member of the SPRC committee, you are requested to be at the right after church in the choir. We'll wait till after the choir hangs up the ropes and that, and we'll be there. SPRC, if you remember the SPRC, be there. Other announcements, we've got the 5 o'clock Christmas carry and anything else. That is it. The rest of the announcements are in the back of your budget. Please, we just want you to tear it off, put it on the refrigerator, and come to all the activities we have here. You look on it. A lot of activities. If you like to knit or sew it, heavy needles is one third. And then the rest of the activities. So please participate. What we're here for. Let's now prepare our thoughts for worship.
Okay, so, whenever you're watching a movie or a TV show, mainly movies, when you go to see the movie, what do they show you before you get to see the movie? Okay. Ads, previews, right? Okay, even on TV, whenever, you know, after the show's over, sometimes they show you what's going to happen next week a little bit, you know, just to kind of kinda get you interested, right? Okay, so previews and, and, and these little trailer things, they, they want to get you interested, right? They let you know what's coming up, okay? The Bible is full of stuff like that, where, where they're letting you know what's coming, okay? So back, back even before Jesus, there was a prophet Isaiah, and he talked about, or he said, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Okay? So, who do you think he was talking about? He was talking about a guy named John the Baptist. Okay? John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist was like Jesus' cousin. But, he was out in the wilderness and he was baptizing people in the River Jordan. And the people, you know, they come to him, what can we do to be saved? And he would tell them, you know, he would, he, you know, he wasn't, he didn't mince words with them. You know, he said, you've got to do this because if you don't, something bad's going to happen. Okay? But, so they, you know, they come and get baptized and they started talking kind of behind his back and they said, hey, do we think this is the Messiah? And he goes, no, 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 no. It is not me. And he he comes out and he says, um, there it is. Okay, so as the people were filled with expectation, okay, see, they, they got a preview. They thought, oh, wait, this this is, you know, this is the big this is the big thing, okay? And all of them were questioning in their heads concerning him, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming. And I am not worthy to untie the, the straps on his sandals. So, you know, he, he was giving the preview. He was, he was letting people know that Jesus was coming. Just like, you know, we, we had Advent to, to help us prepare with hope, joy, love and peace in getting ready for the coming of Jesus. So, as you're getting ready to, to finish your last week of school before Christmas, just remember to prepare. You know, I know, I know you have, you know, you're probably going to have some tests and stuff. But, but remember, but remember, there's something joyful coming. And it's Christmas. And just and remember that, okay? Be prepared. All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for always being with us. Help us to prepare our hearts and minds to be friendly and loving to all those around us. In your son's name.
today about the third Advent candle in our Advent wreath. You heard from my friend Esperanza about the first candle representing hope. And you heard from my friend Amabile about the second candle representing love. Do you know what the third candle represents? Joy. That's right, joy. Joy is like happiness times a million. You know you feel joy when you share God's love with others or when you help others. God gave us the gift of joy when he sent his son to live among us and to die for our sins. I wonder if you can guess what my favorite song is about. That's right, joy. It's about joy. Any guesses what it is? No, no, that's not it. But that is a good one, isn't it? Yes. Joy to the world. My favorite song is Joy to the World.
comes from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. Hear the word of God. Sing loud, O God of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exalt with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is your immense. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O God. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in the midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing, as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you, so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the land and gather the outcasts, and I will change their shame into praise, and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at that time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. And I restore the fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Thank you. 
Lord bless our hearing of the Holy Gospel. Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our Amen. The lectionary provides structure and direction for the preaching of what we call the proclamation of God's Word. So today we heard the Old Testament reading from Zechariah, that little book in the Old Testament. It is called Zechariah, one of the minor prophets. But what has been said of the minor prophets is this, their message is not minor. Their message is major. And so the good news contained in the Old Testament reading out of Zephaniah is a message of promise, a message of good news, a message that calls us into gladness. <coughs> Be glad. The sermon, the passage that I want to read to you now is the one that I'm going to use for the sermon today, and it comes from Philippians 3. Chapter 4. Just a few verses. Verses 4 through 7. And this is what it says. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus. Praise be to God for the good news that we've just heard. I am excited, happy to see the puppet theater being used so well. As I heard the voice, I wonder now who is the voice behind the puppet. Now, if I would read my bulletin, I would know or watch the screen. They told me who was the narrator or who was doing the voice to the puppet. It's exciting to watch a character that is loved by children and to hear the message of Advent, which is a message of joy. Joy is the theme of the day. Joy is the Advent candle that we have lit. Joy is what we celebrate. We celebrate the joy that God gives us in giving us Jesus Christ our Lord. Joy, unquenchable, uncontainable joy. In the, oh, in the New Testament, in Matthew, we read the Beatitudes. And a way of interpreting the opening passage to each one of them, the one we're familiar with is blessed, blessed, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Another translation would say, Happy, happy are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Amen. If you read Zephaniah, the whole little book of Zephaniah, it opens up with a verdict of judgment 
against Israel and against the nations for their unwillingness to be obedient to the Word of God. When I went to school at Perkins School of Theology, I had a professor by the name of James Ward. He was my Old Testament professor. And perhaps if I learned one thing from Professor Ward was this. When you read judgment in Scripture, and the content is filled with verdict and judgment against the people, always look for the word of grace. And in the midst of that passage that is full of judgment, rejoice in the promise, in the opportunity that God gives us for redemption. And usually this redemption is not something that we do on our own or that we make it happen. Usually the redemption that is found is initiated by God. That's the joy of the season. God knows and knew that we needed a Savior. God knows and knew that we needed a Redeemer. And in the fullness of time, God provides this Redeemer in Jesus Christ our Lord. But there's something exciting about this passage in the Epistle. It speaks to a audience that is urban in Philippi. It speaks to a budding community of Christians, most of them marginalized by poverty, by slavery, marginalized by the oppression of a dominant empire which was Rome. And yet, in the midst of this budding community, in the midst of their crisis and of their situation in life, comes the word that says, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. Sometimes, even in church, we seek peace, understanding, and harmony. And sometimes we experience the opposite. Contention, jealousies, Paul reminds us that the work of God in our hearts and through our spirits is the spirit of gentleness, a spirit of understanding, a spirit of peace. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. And then it gives us the urgency of responding to each other with gentleness and peace. Why should we do it? Why must we do it? We must do it because the Lord is near. Another way of putting it is this way. The day of judgment is coming, so you better shake up. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Jesus Christ will soon return. Another way of putting it is, if Jesus Christ doesn't return before our death, we all are going to die. And the mystery, the mystery is that we don't know when. But we we'll all die. The Lord is 
near. And the nearness of the Lord is not to look at our future with fatalistic, idealistic attitude, but to look at our future as a future with promise. The Lord is near to save us. The Lord is near to redeem us. But we in turn must do our part. We must love one another. We must care for one another. We must do for one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Did you hear that from the Gospel reading? The tax collector said, what must we do? Jesus didn't say, stop taxing the people or collecting the tax from the people. Jesus, Jesus says to them, or in this passage, John says to them, collect only what, what is right, collect only what is due. Soldiers also ask, what must we do? And John responds to them, really, don't mistreat the people. Be comfortable with your wages. Don't accept what you are not being paid from the people you protect. Do you notice how joy a state of happiness comes when we understand that God in Christ Jesus has come not only to bring us God's peace and God's joy, but to teach us and to show us how to serve each other. The Lord is near. And then it tells us this little passage out of Philippians that we must be a people of prayer. Do not worry about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. One of the privileges that we have as a community of God, of Jesus Christ, is to gather together bend our knees, to incline our head, to clasp our hands together and pray to God and know that God hears us, that God cares for us, that God is sensitive to our need. And that God wants us to experience the joy of living. Do you remember what Jesus said in John? I have come, I have come so that you may have life and so that you may have it abundantly. I've always thought on this definition of life. Life is the striving for and thriving for survival. And as we strive, I hope we can enjoy the beauty and the joy of living. I hope that we can enjoy the moment in time, our present. And if times are difficult and if times are hard, I hope we know that we're in the right place, a place where we can speak to God, where God can speak to us, where we may be reminded reinforced that God is on our side and that God wants the best for all of us. Amen. And how does the passage from Philippians end? It ends with a blessing. A blessing that many of us ministers bless you as we send you forth into the world. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ, our Lord.
time of waiting. God in Christ Jesus is present with us. God in Christ Jesus knows us by name. God in Christ Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit knows our circumstances. God in Christ Jesus knows our anxieties. God in Christ Jesus listens and hears our prayers. And the promise of God to us today is that God is faithful and that God respond to us and give us signs that our prayers and our requests to God are being processed, are being taken care of. We have a refugee problem worldwide. People who are fleeing their homelands because of the violence and the death and the pestilence that is in their countries. In the Western Hemisphere, we have droves of people from Central America heading north toward the United States looking for an opportunity to enjoy freedom and enjoy peace, freedom and peace that is not available in their countries. People from Nicaragua, Guatemala, El Salvador, Ecuador, all these countries that are in turmoil, there are people who are free. I'm not making a political stance, but I am saying, let us be sensitive to the plight of people, especially of refugees. And let us ask of God that in their journey and pilgrimage, which is a passive pilgrimage, they may be sustained, they may find moments of grace where they experience the kindness of others, the gentleness of others, the loving care of others. And whether they're received into our country and processed or returned, it doesn't negate the reality that people are suffering. So we, to whom God has blessed tremendously, let us respond with a sensitivity and a concern for those who suffer. In the peace of Jesus Christ that surpasses all understanding will be with us now and forever.
Ken Green, Marvin Red, <coughs> Charles Green. Lord, in thy mercy, let us pray in a time of silent meditation.
which he can use, Lord, in your mission of the world, but also in our local communities. Bless the giver, bless the giving, and bless this time of worship. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
This is it for today. Rejoice. Again I say rejoice. Go out into the world and let those that you encounter feel the excitement, the joy that you feel inside of you. Because Jesus Christ is with us. Because Jesus Christ leads. Because Jesus Christ will fulfill the promises of God. Go with this confidence and with this trust. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.